So while we don't have all the electrical components in the shop with us today, I have a pretty good idea of what we're going to eventually need and all the specs. Length, width, height is available online for what we're going to need, so it's a pretty good idea and a start of how much space we're going to need under the seat for all this electrical stuff. And with the design that I have in mind, we're going to have plenty of room to fit it all in there. All right, before I get too far ahead of myself here, I'm just getting it laid down on cardboard with some of the rough measurements that I just took. Nothing too precise about this, just gonna get something to hold up to the bike and see if I like the shape. Nothing too crazy about that. But before I get too deep into getting this down on our cardboard here, let's go over to the bike. I'll tell you exactly what kind of design I'm thinking. Our tray is gonna start right here and it's gonna go all the way back to right here and mount up in these factory mounting holes. What I'm thinking is we do a flange up here just to sit on this lip right here and find a way to attach that. Probably drill a hole, run a bolt through there. And then we're going to come here and basically have the bottom of our tray like that flush to the bottom of the frame rail. We're going to have some tabs on the side that aren't going to be touching the frame rails here. We don't want those to rattle around and make noise, but you do want to get a little bit of airflow in here without letting any water in there. So a tiny bit of breathing room on the sides of our box here. Then we're just gonna come down to about this point where the frame rail changes its direction and kind of bends a little bit here. And we're gonna follow that along to the back. Now this shape back here, it's a little bit of a trapezoid, I guess a little bit. It's a little tight up here and gets a little wider as you go, but that is gonna be flat. And again, we're gonna bend those up on the sides here. Not gonna touch the frame rail with the side bend tabs. Just gonna run it really close and try to get a little bit of airflow in there, but no water. And then here, again, we're gonna do a 90 bend, make a tab that comes over these factory mounting holes, drill some holes, and run them in with a bolt to attach it. But that is gonna be the gist of it. So let's go back to the cardboard. Let's get the shape on paper, put it up to this thing, and see what I like and what I don't like. So here it is, 90 minutes worth of work, holding the cardboard up the bike and getting into what we think is gonna be our final shape here. Now this is just a rough cut. Basically, you start with a lot of material and you cut it all away. You can see all the cardboard guts we have on the table in front of us here. But this is looking great. It's close enough, it's rough, but we have the exact measurements on this big ugly sheet of paper right here. So once we flatten this out, we could transfer this guy on our piece of paper to a piece of metal, cut that out, get the sheet metal break, bend it into shape, weld up the edges, get some holes drilled in for the mounting points, and then we will have an electric tray that will fit to our bike and just needs paint. So let's get this transferred to metal and get it done. Now metal sometimes has a coating on it, you want to strip that off before you make any bends. Generally, it's easier to get to when the piece is flat rather than all bent up. And you can see the contour SCT just rips right through that. Now, if you've ever seen machine work, you know that that blue layout fluid is what you typically see when you're scribing lines in metal. That's called die chem. We didn't have any of that laying around. I went ahead and used the guide coat instead. I find that works just as well. A thin coat of black on there, you can scribe right through it and everything pops really well, allowing you to make your bends very easily. This brings me to my next point, and that is that you don't wanna use Sharpie when you're making bend lines like that. Sharpie is thick, it's inaccurate, it's hard to be perfectly straight on as well. I find that a scribe just works better, they're thin, you could be perfectly accurate on the break. You could be perfectly accurate when you're marking cut lines and it's just a better method overall. Okay, here is what we got. So this lip right here is going to be the front end of our motorcycle. As you can see, this is going to be the front mounting point and this is going to fold up and then over 
to give us exactly what we need right there. These are trash, and this edge of the box and this edge of the box is going to fold up, and then we'll weld along that seam right there. Same thing goes with all of these outer tabs that you see along down the side here. All those are going to fold up, and really, our electrical tray is just gonna be this space in the middle right here. Moving down, we have a little bit extra here. We didn't take any measurements for that because since there is going to be a huge bend here, we're gonna need to make a little bit of a V cut in this corner, so it gave us some extra material. We're just gonna have to shape this as we go. Down here, pretty standard stuff. We're gonna do a bend here at the back, and then it's gonna fold over here, and this will be our rear mounting point. Probably a hole there, probably a hole there to get to the factory mounting points. These are trash. We have another weld coming out in this corner to this corner, and then again over here, weld this corner to this corner, and that'll be it. And ignore this line right here again. That's just a mistake I made a little bit earlier on. So, the shears. Let's get this thing cut out, and then we'll take it over the brake, and this will start to take shape as our electrical tray. Super excited. The shears are so much better than the regular tin snips for this job. They go so much faster, and they're super easy to keep on the line. You can see exactly where the jaws are. They come to a nice point, and you can sort of steer it back and forth to keep it nice and straight. Also, you wanna make sure to take it nice and slow here. You can easily modulate the trigger to increase or decrease the speed to keep things nice and accurate. But overall, so much better than the tin snips. Now, although I don't really like them, I do recommend having a set of all three aviation snips. They make getting into those tight corners really easy. Let's pause for a second here because I wanna give away another tool for you guys. We're giving away the Eastwood electric shears that I used in this episode, and all you gotta do is subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment on either this video or for a second entry into the giveaway, you can leave me a comment on the next video, which is the fourth episode in the series. And make it count, because I'm picking the one that makes me laugh the hardest. We got a few more small cuts to make with the tin snips, so let's get back to that electrical tray. All right. And with this red shear, we'll have all of our major cuts. And look at that. Straight as an arrow. I love it. We got a couple more relief cuts to make for where a metal is going to weld up on the edges, but this is it. Looks great. Let's head over to the sheet metal brake and start getting some bends in this thing. So if you're making a box like this at home, you need to have a good brake. And if you're looking for the best of the best, the electro brake is it. It allows you to put the leafs or fingers in different orientations than you'd be able to do on a regular finger brake. The electro brake is also really nice because you can really hang your piece off the edge of the brake, which is especially helpful and the only way you can pull off these complex patterns sometimes. Quick little bit of advice that I learned when working with a sheet metal brake here, you wanna plan out the order of your bends. Otherwise, some of the bends in the metal already might get in your way, which is exactly what happened to me. On the last bend, some of the sides were getting in the way, but no big deal, some quick thinking and a panel clamp, I was able to get that bent up, and it looked perfect anyways, so I lucked out. 
It's always nice to be able to reuse some mounting holes that were already there previously. I grabbed the cutoff wheel, cut off the nuts that were there, and we were able to mount up our electrical tray, no problem in those two holes. The profile gauges are always nice to have on hand. You never know when you're going to need one of these. You've seen me use it previously to pull out the motor, but in this case, what I did was I put it up to the frame and then we could cut the tongue on our new electrical tray to perfectly match that shape and everything mounted up cleanly and the profile gauge really helped. One thing I didn't show you guys is I went ahead and threw the electrical tray into the blast cabinet just to get rid of anything that might be on the tray, but mostly that guide coat that I used as a pseudo layout fluid. After that, it was ready to be welded up. Now, when it comes to welding thin sheet metal, you do want to be careful, especially if it's a project like this one where you've spent hours getting everything bent and ready to go. What you want to do is tack everything, make sure nothing moves on you, use some compressed air to cool it down in between welds, make sure your settings are right, and then MIG is just point and shoot. Go around slowly, make sure there's no warpage until the full thing is welded. Well, I think this thing turned out great. I think there's plenty of space in the tray itself, especially on that diagonal portion that follows the front of the frame. The way the tank is shaped, you really get a ton of space under there, and I think this is more than enough for all of my electrical components, and I think if I'm lucky, I'll even be able to fit the battery in there. It doesn't even hang down that far, and I think once I paint everything black, it'll blend right in with the frame and keep the triangle nice and clean, which adds to the cafe racer look. So in the next episode here, we got some just as good sheet metal work that you're definitely going to want to see. We're going to use the factory seat pan and I'm going to Frankenstein something together to make it fit perfectly for our cafe racer needs. You're definitely going to want to see that one. We got some bead roller work. We got some more sheet metal fabrication coming up. So stay tuned and keep an eye out for that one. Leave us a like, leave us a comment, tell us what you think about the series, and as always, thanks for watching. I'm JD. Make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.